Welcome to the Gliders for Dummies Crash Course, where you will become a master pilot of these stupid devices. Other Zonai devices sold separately. The mini game we're using to test drive here today is available on Eventide Island. After completing the Mari Bibrin Shrine, which I don't want to cover because a ton of people have, we're covering glider basics here. So let's dive in. Consistency. If you're having trouble landing those two central rings, I'd suggest saving every two to three runs if profitable. It's pretty frustrating when you hit the 50 rupee mark, followed by two wonky runs. Then you're about to hit the 100 rupee ring with a nosedive, but Link decides he feels like taking a swim instead. And then you're angry, playing a game. So you perform worse. Just save yourself the time. After the countdown, you want to do two things while sliding. First, hold shield. This helps to avoid getting disoriented while repositioning. Second, center camera on the bullseye, about 45 degrees above Link. This will help with reference on where the glider needs to be facing without looking at the rings. And the height helps with depth perception, so you can approach low without crashing. Speaking of approaching low, the reason you want to approach low is because at a higher altitude you need to stress about three coordinates at once. The X, Y, and Z axis. When you approach at a lower angle, you're taking a ton of Z axis adjustments out of the equation, which heavily impacts the Y axis. This allows you to really focus on the X axis. Also, if you approach too high and are lined up, you can use Rewind to stop your momentum and drop. My squirrel brain is too incompetent to rely on this one, but it's a solid strat if you can use it well. Technique. As important as speed and consistency are, they do nothing for you if you just don't get how the glider works. Hopefully, I can help with that. There's a flow to hovering gliders. This symbol is the center of the glider. Standing on it is sort of putting it in neutral. This position will not generally affect the glider much, so it should be where you stand immediately after making adjustments. The flow for hovering is simple. Forward, center, forward, center. You want to look at Link's foot positioning on the glider, not where the glider's going. Only glance where you're going, for reference on adjustments that need to be made to your camera angle. It's worth noting that the glider's movement feels like it has very high latency with Link's inputs. So we can't really react to the glider, only to our own inputs on the glider. For example, if we accidentally strafe left, we know we need to strafe symmetrically right for about the same amount of time. Don't forget to return to the center and then continue that pacing of forward, center, forward, center. So, using these strats together, because you're always holding shield for camera control and keeping the camera pointed at the target, this method of stepping forward, then center, is not only keeping us properly in the air, but it's also using our weight in the right places to gradually path in the proper direction on our x-axis. If you think about it, the right camera angle causes it to basically steer itself with this method. Just to recap, we are always holding shield, always pointing our camera at our target, always maintaining the flow that keeps us in the air, stepping forward to dive, gaining speed, stepping back to the center to coast. We're making sure to take some extra deep dives so that we can approach the target at a low altitude for an easier, more precise landing. We are not reacting to any crazy delayed motion that the glider is making because we knew we messed up 
We were looking at Link's leg positioning relative to the glider symbol almost exclusively, saw where we stepped, mirrored it to course correct, and are focused on keeping that floaty rhythm going. The occasional glance at the target will allow us to correct our camera angle if necessary, always centered on the target. If we've accidentally approached our target too high up, those of us who are capable, we'll be using our rewind ability to lose all momentum. Slam dunking that ring. A few final notes I'd like to add. As the sun sets and during inclement weather, seeing the rings can be difficult, so feel free to camp out down here until morning if you need to. Lastly, the game seems to be scored once the glider touches the water, and it uses the central point of the glider as a reference for scoring. Just something you might want to keep in mind. Now, I do have a challenge for you. Get your buddies to try this game first. Then show them this video and have them try again. What a nice and easy way to scam them into earning you rupees. Feel free to let me know how this worked for you. I am really curious. So a lot of these were tips that I came up with when I was having a really hard time trying to figure out how the glider worked. I honestly had a hard time even keeping it in the air, which in hindsight, after watching people who have never done it before, do it successfully keeping themselves in the air the first time, several times. Clearly that's a, a, a me issue, but I figured that there are probably some other people out here that are struggling and God forbid, None of those videos had any tips that would help me, except for the shield trick, and technically the rewind ability should help me. I'm just bad, so that's that. Thanks for watching, and I do hope you have a wonderful day. Good luck.